Meghan Markle's father is alert and out of heart surgery, it has been revealed. Thomas Markle, 73, said he underwent surgery on Wednesday morning following a heart attack last week. Mr. Markle told TMZ that doctors implanted three stents in his blood vessels. I'm okay. It will take a long time to heal, he said. Staying in the hospital a few more days. Not allowed to get excited. Meghan's father had previously revealed on Tuesday that he wouldn't be able to attend the royal wedding because of the surgery. He said doctors plan to go in and clear blockage, repair damage, and put a stent where it is needed during the operation. Meghan's half-sister Samantha was also in the hospital on Wednesday after suffering a broken ankle and fractured knee. Samantha's boyfriend Mark told TMZ that they were driving in Florida when they had a paparazzi confrontation. He claims a photographer veered in front of their car to get a clear shot. Mark said he then tried to avoid him by swerving to the left and crashed into a concrete barrier. Mark said Samantha, who suffers from multiple sclerosis and is in a wheelchair, hit the windshield and fell to the floor. He said her foot was twisted backwards. The accident comes just hours after Samantha said Mr. Markle is upset and alone in the hospital following his surgery. She also slammed claims that Kensington Palace has come to the aid of Mr. Markle. That is not true, or he would not have been living in his place, she told the son. He'd have had a reliable vehicle. He'd have been with security. I have receipts showing I've sent my father money twice by MoneyGram because he needed it. He is badly in need of help. I'm dreadfully worried about him. He's completely on his own. Samantha claims her father checked in anonymously at a hospital to avoid photographers. Mr. Markle is thought to have previously stayed at General Hospital in Rosarito, the town where he lives, but it is unclear where Wednesday's operation took place. Samantha, who is currently in Florida, said Mr. Markle was also devastated that he could not walk his daughter down the aisle. He was upset. He wanted to go, she said. But his doctor had the overruling opinion that he needed surgery. So he's smart enough to know this is life-threatening. Samantha also claims Kensington Palace did not offer to fly Mr. Markle to London early or provide any information on how and when he should get there. She alleges that Harry, who has never met Meghan's father, made no contact with Mr. Markle and that Meghan hasn't contacted him since the heart attack. This goes directly against Mr. Markle's own claims that Meghan called and texted him after he decided to pull out of the wedding. Mr. Markle told TMZ that Meghan tried calling him on Monday, but he wasn't near his phone. She later sent a text saying she loved him and was concerned about his health. Mr. Markle's son Thomas, who is being blamed by his father for the heart attack, agreed with Samantha that Kensington Palace didn't do enough for their father. It would have been better for the palace to have guided him, as well as this for the matter, to ensure the focus is on Harry and Meg and not her family back in the States, Thomas told Mirror Online. They should have intervened and guided us when Meg and Harry's relationship was first made public. The surgery has been the latest twist on a roller coaster of speculation surrounding whether Mr. Markle would attend Saturday's royal wedding at Windsor Castle in Berkshire. It came just hours after Meghan seemed to have convinced her father to change his mind and walk her down the aisle. Mr. Markle pulled out on Monday, saying he didn't want to further embarrass his daughter after the mail on Sunday revealed he had staged paparazzi photos for money. But on Tuesday it seemed he had backtracked on his decision after the bride to be reportedly pleaded with him to come to England for the big day. I hate the idea of missing one of the greatest moments in history and walking my daughter down the aisle, Mr. Markle said. Of course I'd walk her down the aisle. This is a historic moment. I'd like to be a part of history. While Meghan may have forgiven him, it appears the paparazzi photos have further strained Mr. Markle's relationship with her mother Doria Ragland. A source told The Sun Online, Thomas and Doria are currently barely speaking to one another. He is trying to make peace after everything that has happened. Their relationship had been hanging by a thread for months before the staged photo scandals. He had told friends 
that he wanted to come with the peace gesture for an appeasement before the wedding and his daughter's big day, but his recent actions have crushed that. Mr. Markle has blamed his recent health troubles on his son Thomas, who told Harry that marrying Meghan would be the biggest mistake in royal wedding history. It's not too late. Meghan Markle is obviously not the right woman for you, Thomas's letter, shared with Intich, reads. I'm confused why you don't see the real Meghan that the whole world now sees. Thomas went on to call his half-sister a jaded shallow conceited woman that will make a fool of you and the royal family heritage. Just a week later, in another open letter, Thomas apologized for his words and begged Meghan to invite him to her wedding. Thomas has since flown into London to support his half-sister, despite the fact that he is not invited to the wedding. He said that his father's recent health troubles have put everything into perspective about what's important in life. My sister's going to be one of the best things ever to have happened to the royal family, Thomas told Mirror Online on Wednesday. She will be the perfect modern princess. I wish Meg and Harry nothing but a happy and healthy future together. Thomas also said he was mortified to hear that his father blamed his heart attack on the open letter to Prince Harry. My letter wasn't intended to cause hurt or upset, Thomas said. My earlier pleas fell on deaf ears, and after exhausting everything I could think of, I'd hoped my letter might shame the palace, I guess, into getting in touch. I was wrong. It wasn't designed to humiliate Meg into inviting me, but more hoping we could get the help we needed. Ever since her relationship with Harry emerged two years ago, our lives have been changed forever. We needed guidance from the royals, but didn't get it. Earlier this week, Mr. Markle revealed that Meghan held no hard feelings against him for setting up paparazzi photos for money. When asked what the Queen thought about his money grab, Mr. Markle laughed and said, I don't think the Queen is thinking about what I'm doing. Mr. Markle said, Although he doesn't believe faking the hammy photos was that serious, he admitted it was a stupid decision. He also blasted eldest daughter Samantha, who revealed she convinced Mr. Markle to set up the photos. Mr. Markle said Samantha has no real relationship with Meghan and knows nothing of her relationship with Harry. Before changing his mind, Mr. Markle said he believed his ex-wife Doria Ragland would be a good choice to give their daughter away at St. George's Chapel. Miss Ragland touched down in the UK from Los Angeles on Wednesday to support her daughter and is the clear favourite to walk her down the aisle. Prince Charles is 2-1 with the bookies to step in, while Prince William is 5-1 to take Meghan into St. George's Chapel before starting his duties as Harry's best man. There have also been a flurry of bets on Meghan walking down the aisle alone. On Monday night, Mr. Markle told TMZ that Miss Raglan should be the person to do it. The yoga instructor and social worker has been described by Meghan as a free-spirited clinical therapist, and she has been seen alongside Meghan at a number of public events. Harry, who has described her as amazing, Flew Miss Ragland out to Toronto to join Meghan and himself at the Invictus Games last year. Royal experts said at the time that Harry's decision to invite Meghan's mother to join them at the closing ceremony of the tournament was hugely significant. Miss Ragland was already expected to have an important role during the ceremony. It is thought she will ride with Meghan in the car to the chapel to Windsor Castle. She is also expected to meet the Queen, Prince Philip, Prince Charles and Camilla and Prince William and his wife, Kate, before the big day. A friend of Meghan and Harry's told the Mail that she was standing by her father and pleaded for understanding, saying he was not in a good place. The friend said this is not what she wants. She obviously wants her dad there. And the idea of contemplating him not being there now is not something that she wants to have to do. She and Prince Harry are begging for people to give him some space. They have been saying this for weeks while trying to offer him support and help. He is clearly feeling under immense pressure. The concern for him is real and genuine. He is a proud man who wants to be a father and not be taken care of, but it's quite difficult. Everyone needs to pause and think what this is doing to them and, more importantly, to him. It is a really worrying scary situation. 
the couple have been doing everything they can to help him. Harry, 33, is said to be distraught and could try to get Mr. Markle to change his mind. The friend said Harry feels guilty that this has happened to someone he loves because they are in a relationship with him. He is devastated. He feels like this is another thing in the wake of him. The problems he causes. He feels that anyone who gets associated with his life, this is the price they have to pay. He wants to protect her, and this is really difficult for him to swallow. The couple issued an unprecedented official statement through Kensington Palace in the wake of the crisis. A spokesman said, this is a deeply personal moment for Ms. Markle in the days before her wedding. She and Prince Harry ask again for understanding and respect to be extended to Mr. Markle in this difficult situation. Mr. Markle confirmed to TMZ that he worked with the freelance photographer to set up images of him being measured for his wedding suit and searching online for articles about his daughter. He said he did it to rehabilitate his image but had been left looking stupid and hammy and would not be traveling to the UK to give her away. Kensington Palace was clearly broadsided by the claims as aides had insisted on Sunday that Mr. Markle would be by his daughter's side at Windsor Castle this weekend. TMZ further claimed that Mr. Markle, a former award-winning Hollywood lighting director who lives a reclusive life in Mexico, confirmed he had been offered money by US-based freelance photographer Jeff Rayner. But he insisted the deal was not principally about money. Instead, he wanted to rehabilitate his image after pictures had been published of him looking overweight and disheveled. The website wrote, he says since his daughter started dating Prince Harry he's been offered anywhere between $50,000 and $100,000 for interviews and he's turned all of them down. Thomas says the paparazzi agency approached him, offered him money, though nowhere near the reported $100,000 and he figured there was no harm in it and it would help recast his image. He says he was just going along with the paparazzi agency, which he now deeply regrets. Mr. Markle also told the website that he had suffered a heart attack six days ago, but checked himself out of the hospital so he could attend the wedding. There was no independent confirmation that Mr. Markle had been ill, however. Indeed, last week he was seen leaving his home in the beachside community of Rosarito, Mexico, and driving to San Diego, just over the U.S. border. According to reports, he stopped for a few hours of sleep and then carried on to Laws, where he was photographed putting a pot of flowers on Raglan's doorstep. To add to the confusion, Samantha then claimed that she was the culprit behind the humiliating photograph debacle. In a bizarre intervention, Samantha said she had advised her father to cooperate with the photographer to show himself and, strangely, the royal family, in a positive light. She also insisted his motive hadn't been money. One source told the Mail that Mr. Markle was very unwell, adding, he is under significant stress. There is genuine concern about his safety. His health and safety are paramount to Meghan. He is under a huge amount of pressure. She's not going to tell me I can't speak about my life, Meghan's half-sister launches astonishing attack on royal bride-to-be royal fans have hit out at Meghan Markle's half-sister after she launched a stinging attack on the bride-to-be, saying that she has no right to try and censor her. Samantha Markle has given a bombshell interview to TMZ, where she insisted she had freedom of speech and every right to speak out. The mother of three who has given a series of meddling media interviews in recent weeks laid into Meghan amid claims she is upset about her airing her views. She tore into the future princess just days after wading into the fake paparazzi row when her father staged fake paparazzi shots for money. In the explosive rant the 53-year-old said, she's not going to tell me that I can't speak about my life and she fumed, I'm not going to take it. She's way out of her league to tell me that I can't speak. After the astonishing clip emerged royal well-wishers blasted Samantha, telling her, the world can't wait for you to go away. The verbal attack came as Meghan's mother Doria touched down in the UK for an emotional reunion with her daughter as she prepares to meet the royal family for the first time, and preparations continued in Windsor for the big day on Saturday. It is believed 
that Doria will now be the one to walk Meghan down the aisle at the ceremony on Saturday following Mr. Markle's surgery. Samantha, Mr. Markle's daughter by his first marriage, has been accused of abusing her connections to Meghan, who she hasn't seen for 10 years. She had waded into the faked paparazzi photos row as she defended her father when it emerged Mr. Markle had staged the shots for money. Samantha told TMZ, if it's about my life or my father's there is something in this country called freedom of speech. She doesn't have a copyright on that and she's not going to tell me that I can't speak about my life or my father's life where it's a matter of public self-defense. The media is disparaging us. I'm not going to take it. She's not qualified to suggest that I don't under any law in this country. This is not Great Britain. I'm a United States citizen and that's all there is to it. She's way out of her league to tell me that I can't speak. I'm not saying anything about her, but if I'm talking about my life or my father's she has to respect it. In the explosive chat Samantha admitted the relationship she has with her half-sister is strained and claimed that Meghan doesn't have a relationship with anyone in the family. In the interview, which comes just days before the couple tie the knot at St. George's Chapel on Saturday, Samantha also revealed she had bought the couple a sentimental wedding gift adding, I would like to give it to her in person, but if not I will certainly send it. Samantha first hit out at her famous half-sister when the romance was revealed in 2016. She claimed Meghan had always been attracted to Prince Harry because she was ambitious and wanted to become a princess. Samantha also announced she would release her memoirs and that her sister should be prepared for some uncomfortable revelations. The bishop uncle, an outspoken half-sister and a cannabis farmer nephew, how Meghan Markle's estranged family have turned the royal wedding into a very colorful affair Meghan Markle's family have done their best to steal the spotlight off the royal bride to be ahead of her wedding to Prince Harry this weekend. Never far from controversy, the extended Markle clan have hit the headlines over the past few months, using their newfound fame to exploit the family name. The future princess's family are a mix of colorful characters that include a reformed alcoholic, a bishop, and even a cannabis farmer. Some have even started arriving in the UK ahead of the nuptials this Saturday as they prepare to give a round of media interviews about the marriage. Here we look at some of Prince Harry's future in-laws that will soon be forever linked with the royal family, the recovering alcoholic who sells advertising, was once married to Meghan's half-brother, Thomas Markle Jr. She was pictured arriving at Heathrow with her sons Tyler and Thomas. They are in the UK to conduct a round of interviews, even though she hasn't seen Meghan for around 20 years. Dooley is documenting her stay in London on a Facebook page Royal Wedding with the Dooley Markles, where she has uploaded a selection of pictures of famous landmarks. Tracy's son Tyler Meghan's nephew is developing a strain of cannabis called Markle's Sparkle in the U.S. state of Oregon, known for its relaxed drug laws. He considers himself a pioneer in the legal production of the drug in California. He claims to have last spoken to Meghan three years ago and remembers her babysitting them when they were younger. Mr. Markle Jr. Meghan's estranged half-brother works as a job in glass fitter in Grants Pass, Oregon. His girlfriend Darlene Blount, 37, spent two nights in jail recently. She allegedly assaulted her boyfriend on New Year's Day, and a year earlier he allegedly held a gun to her head. Both charges were dropped. He wrote a letter to Prince Harry describing Meghan as a jaded shallow conceited woman that will make a joke of you and the royal family heritage. A week later, Thomas apologized profusely for the letter and begged to be invited to the royal wedding. Meghan's stepmother was once married to Meghan's father. She is the mother of Meghan's two half-siblings, Thomas Markle Jr. and Samantha Grant. Roslyn, Nee Loveless, and Thomas Sr. were both living in Chicago, Illinois, when they met and married, but split when their son was 10 in 1976. After the divorce, Roslyn moved with her two children to Albuquerque, New Mexico, while Thomas Sr. relocated to Los Angeles, California, to pursue a career in TV and film. Roslyn who does not speak to Samantha also had another child named Bobby Lucero, who is now 35.
Megan's father was a workaholic who already had two children from his first marriage to Rosalind Loveless when he met Doria, Megan's mother. He worked in show busyness, winning awards for lighting direction, and won £560,000 on the lottery which allowed Megan to be privately educated. But he split with his wife and left Los Angeles for Mexico after declaring himself bankrupt with credit card debts of £24,180. He now lives as a recluse in Rosarito in Mexico. Megan's half-sister admits she hasn't spoken to Megan in almost a decade, but plans to release a book called The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister. She has launched a number of verbal attacks at Megan and hit out when she wasn't invited to the wedding. She hasn't seen her half-sister for 10 years. Samantha, a writer and counselor who is based in Florida and sometimes uses the surname Grant, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2008. Megan's teenage niece is estranged from her mother Samantha. She lives with her grandmother Roslyn Markle, Thomas's first wife in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She has defended Megan from attacks by her own mother, saying she has spent years telling her how much she hates the future princess. She wanted to be nice, to say how much she loves her sister, but after years of telling me and the rest of the family how much she hates Megan and what a horrible woman Megan is, which isn't true. Megan's uncle, retired diplomat Michael Markle, worked for the U.S. Air Force and lives in Palm Bay, Florida. During his distinguished 19-year career, he worked in Ottawa, Bucharest, Berlin, and Guam and used his connections to help Megan get a job at the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in 2001. He told the Mail on Sunday how he helped her get the position when she was just 20. The 75-year-old is the leader at the Eastern Orthodox Catholic Church in the U.S., in Florida, where he goes under the name Bishop Dismas. He is said to be a recluse and is rarely seen outside of the church, which used to have a congregation of around 40, but is now only attended by the bishop himself.